morning everybody my name is Carla and you have reached my floss tube channel Carla being crafty where I talk about mostly cross stitch but also other uh, crafts that I'm involved in and a little bit of life thrown in um, this is my 65th floss tube video and it is Sunday October 17th um, two weeks until Halloween actually two weeks minus one day um, my nephew is like super excited about that um, I want to say welcome to everybody that is here. If you're brand new, then thank you for stopping by. I hope you like what you see and want to like and subscribe. And if you are one of my continuing viewers, I have to again just thank you guys so much for um, coming by and supporting me each week and looking out for me. Um, I did miss last week um, and I had so many people that checked on me and were concerned about me. Um, basically what happened was, uh, not last week obviously, but the week before, um, I had started getting kind of just like back pain, a little bit of back pain, you know, like Friday night and Saturday and Sunday when I did my video, but it wasn't that bad and I, I woke up Monday morning and the back pain was pretty bad. I, I thought it was sciatica. Um, still to be determined if that's what it was but basically um, I was having you know back pain my lower back and then the act of trying to stand up was extremely painful and walking was extremely painful um, laying down I was okay I was uncomfortable but okay so I stayed home from work on Monday and then I felt uh, much better towards the, the middle of the day. I could feel it easing up and everything. And um, so I went to work on Tuesday. Sitting in my desk chair all day, I just it was getting worse and worse all day. Um, and I was just, you know, struggling with it, not really saying anything, not doing anything about it. I didn't go home early or anything, but it was definitely getting worse um, throughout the course of the day. And um, Wednesday when I got up, I didn't get up because it was like even worse than it had been Monday and um, I ended up being out for the rest of the week and in such extreme pain that it was scary like I was contemplating calling an ambulance but I was like there's nothing they can do I was taking my temperature all the time just to make sure that wasn't anything else um, I looked at the symptoms for a kidney stone and you know it wasn't that it was a lower pain and I had no fever and I had no nausea it was just back pain but super super severe back pain and um, it started easing up about Saturday afternoon last week and by Sunday it had pretty much eased up but I just was not in the mood to do a video I wasn't in the mood first of all to get up early um, I needed the extra sleep and then the idea of trying to make myself semi-presentable and sit here and stuff, I just I just couldn't do it. Um, I, I don't think that I've, in recent memory, had any kind of pain like that that was quite that bad. Um, looking back on it now, it's almost funny because it was like, I was almost like a little squirrel. Um, it was so painful to stand up and I mean, the only, you know, obviously I had to get up occasionally and go to the bathroom. Um, so I would force myself to do that. Um, and then a couple times when I was already up, I managed to get into the kitchen. Now I have a tiny apartment, but I'm telling you that walk into the refrigerator to grab stuff that was on the top shelf, because I certainly couldn't bend down to get to the bottom shelf. Um, that was quite an ordeal. So I was tending to like go to the refrigerator maybe once a day and squirrel a bunch of stuff over to where I was laying down. Um, and I had a little, little, uh, nut pile, I guess I had, I had, luckily I had bought hummus like right before, um, this all happened. So I had a little container of hummus and a bag of like chips and that's basically what I ate for two days because that's all I could get at. Um, you know, I had a big bottle of diet Sprite and that was by my bed and you know, so I was just really really not doing well um, I did actually was able to stitch quite a bit during those three days uh, that I was off work um, in between sleeping and being uncomfortable every so often I get into a position where it's like okay I can I can stay here and I would stitch um, I didn't watch floss tube I just was not in a mental head space for it so I'm way behind on watching all of my favorites um, but 
you know, that's, that's what happened last week. And, and as I said, I'm really thankful for everybody who, um, took the time to check on me and send me messages. Um, I have to, again, like I do every week in the summer, say, please excuse the glow because I've turned everything off. Um, and yeah, it's still super hot here. Um, all last week it was 95 degrees. I was back at work last week. Um, and I'm pretty fine. I mean, my back, it's a little bit like, like I'm aware of it. And so I'm really taking things easy. And if, if I'm feeling any kind of pain or whatever, I'm getting out the ice packs. Um, so yeah, so it's been really hot here still, which, um, does not really help with making me feel uncomfortable. Um, while I was laid up, I mean, that was one of the things I was using ice and then heating pads. And I mean, having a heating pad when it's that hot, I mean, I have my air conditioning going, but you know, it's a little apartment air conditioner. Uh, air conditioner doesn't necessarily make the entire apartment comfortable and, um, yeah, so I was just, I had an ordeal that week. Um, last week I was doing much better, just kind of tired. Um, I actually went to the doctor on Tuesday, which was unrelated to the back, although I did talk to her about it. She says that it may not have been sciatica, it may have been the performance muscles that were affecting the sciatic nerve, but it didn't seem like the sciatic nerve was completely involved because the pain didn't go all the way down my leg. I don't know, it doesn't really matter which muscle or nerve it was, it just was painful. And although my friends were like, well, I'll help you get to the doctor and stuff, you know, when I was in the really bad pain, my feeling was that there wasn't really anything they were going to be able to do for me. And she kind of confirmed that because she asked me what I had done and I said I was doing ice and heat and I took some extra Advil and she said, oh, that's basically what we would have told you to do. So I guess back pain is something that to a certain extent, you just need to get through those few days where it's bad. And I did, and I'm back. And thank you all for sticking by and, um, you know, uh, sending me messages and et cetera, et cetera. So, that's all done. Um, I'm back. I have a lot of whips to show you because I have two weeks worth. And as I said, even though I was not feeling well, I did manage to stitch quite a bit. Um, so yeah, so I have a lot of whips to show you today. Um, I also received my second um, <clears throat> Universal Yums box, so I will probably be doing that tasting video sometime today, so it'll probably go up tonight, maybe tomorrow, but probably tonight, knowing me, I'll get it up as soon as I get it done. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, I actually did finish a project while I was not feeling well. It's not fully finished yet, but I did finish all of the components for my Lime Cube, which is based on, well, it's this pattern. And if you're new, I did that. This is a counted cross stitch pattern and I did it and then was like, well, what am I going to do with this piece? So I got the idea to do four more versions of the exact same pattern in different colors and then to do kind of like a plain one for the bottom. So I had six, six uh, matching or same size squares and then I'm going to sew them together into a cube, fill it with walnut shells and I'll have a cube that I can use as a, just a, an ornament thing or, you know, a paperweight or whatever. So this was the first square lime and then I finished the, this is going to be the top, this is the rainbow one. And as you can see, I'm starting to stitch them together, and I'm just basically using a whip stitch kind of thing. Um, so that's the rainbow. That was one of the ones I, I finished in the past two weeks. Then these you have seen previously. This is the um, peach. Oops. Peach, peachy brownie one and this is the, back. the blue purple and then I finished the pink
And then I just did this for the bottom, just a little plain kind of, you know, textured stitch just to, so it would be nice and flat, but still pretty. So now I just need to sew this all together and then fill it to get it fully finished. But I was really excited to finish that. Um, and it was a nice thing to stitch when I wasn't feeling well because for whatever reason, I find doing the counted cross stitch very soothing. Um, I'm not counted cross stitch, I'm sorry, counted canvas. Maybe because the stitches are bigger. Um, it almost seems more um, methodical. I, I don't know if that's the right word I'm thinking of, but even more than cross stitch. Cross stitch I find relaxing, but even more so I find the counted canvas. Um, kind of relaxing so I was really excited to get that done and now I just need to put it together so hopefully you guys will be seeing that finished project soon Ooh, I'm getting sweaty in here and the sweat is burning my eyes so sorry they're they're stinging um, okay so now my big pile of whips um, I did work on my diamond painting a little bit um, and I don't know if you had seen it down to here if I'd already shown that and then I just, this past week, started working a little bit on the side here. And I didn't even finish. You know, I didn't completely fill it in. I just started. Um, the problem is with this for me right now, and in fact, all of my projects that I would do sitting at my desk, is that especially after a day of sitting all day at work, I'm just not that comfortable sitting. I want to kind of stretch out a little bit. And so any of my projects that I'm doing on my lap desk it's harder to do because I have to sit. So I worked on that a little bit, but um, as you can see, I didn't get that much done. And I don't know if I'm gonna get it done for Halloween. I, you know, which bums me out because I'll get it done shortly after and then, you know, it'll sit for a year. I don't know, maybe I'll hang it up anyway because it's like super cute, but um, I don't know if I will be able to put it on my door like my original plan was. But we'll see, maybe I'll get, you know, a burst of energy and be able to get it done, but um, we'll just have to, we'll have to see, take that by ear. Okay, so the other things that I worked on, um, whoops, I worked a bit on, oops, and this is the pattern side, not the picture side. Leo by Satsuma Street, which I started on my birthday, pretty much. Um, I did that last year as well. I started a lion project on my birthday. Um, and so I thought, I, I got this pattern partly because of that reason and partly because I really wanted to try uh, stitching something on Black Ada since I'd never done it before. And I thought that this would be a good... Um, project to start. I'm using all the called for colors. Um, basically, I think there was a couple maybe that I didn't have, so I substituted something that was similar. Um, and this is where I got on that. And I really love the super bright colors on the black. I just think that it's like so fun and pretty. Um, so, I mean, I'm not having too much of a trouble with the black Ada, although... It's a 14 count black Ada, you know, and I don't know if I would be able to do anything that was much smaller on black. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, this one is fine. It's not like my favorite thing to stitch on. Not that I necessarily have a favorite, I don't think, but, um, you know, I might, I might try a project on a 16, but I don't think we're going to get much smaller than that in the black or the super, super dark blue or anything like that. Um, just because of seeing. Um, I actually, my eyes this past couple weeks have been, um, I feel like just a little bit more blurry and I don't know if it's just like a natural aging thing. I also, um, I went to the doctor, as I said last week and, um, my blood sugar numbers have been really off. Um, I've been taking, I've kind of been pre-diabetic for six years or so, and I've been taking oral medication for that. Um, and apparently they're just not doing the job anymore. Um, 
and I've been really bad about going to the doctor so I finally went and got all my labs done and my A1Cs are way too high. So I had a, an appointment with the doctor and I'm being a lot more um, intense about the monitoring right now and she did put me on a small dose of uh, insulin at night. Um, which was my choice. She she said either another oral medication, but she said actually the insulin would get me in control a lot faster, so I chose to do that. And anybody who's like freaking out about the insulin, it's really no big deal to take as far as, you know, taking it. Um, you don't even feel it. It's super no big deal. But, um, uh, and it is working. It's bringing my numbers down pretty rapidly, which is good. Um, but uh, I know one of the things of having high blood sugar is that it does affect your, your eyesight uh, while the numbers are really high. So I'm hoping that that's what it is and, and I will get back to feeling less blurry. Um, we'll see. Time will tell, right? It'll give me a couple weeks and I may be like, oh yeah, my glasses are fine now. Um, but okay, so... That was Leo. Next thing. Um, oh, this is the crossed wing. I think it's called First Encounter. But I'm calling it Chickadees because that's what it is. And I am doing this uh, as a gift for my friend Tracy, um, who lives in Pittsburgh and has a backyard with a bird feeder that she is enjoying immensely all of the birds that come visit her and the chipmunks and the squirrels um, and uh, so they're her her pets I I said that she's very much like Snow White right now you know at the water fountain in fact she sent me a a video uh, last week or the week before that she went there's a I guess a big park by her and she went on a little walk and there was a deer laying there so yeah so she's uh, she's not having a deer in her backyard but she has all of the nature um, I see an occasional squirrel where I live, but <laughs> that's about it. Um, anyway, so I'm making this for her. If it's done in time, it will be a holiday gift. If it is not done in time, it'll be a whenever gift, which she knows. Um, but I'm actually making really good progress on it. So I got the first guy um, almost done. He's not he's not completely backstitched, but, um, but his regular stitching is done. And then I'll start on the other one that's over here. She um, really likes the cross stitches that are very um, realistic. I guess that's the word, you know, a real natural bird and stuff. So, um, so I thought this one was perfect for her. And it's nice because it's a, it's a pretty, actually smallish pattern. Um, it didn't seem that way, but when I started working on it, I realized it was kind of small and it's not going to be that difficult to get it completed. Um, I have another pattern for her to do eventually. It's another crosswing collection and it's a bird feeder with a bunch of different birds. But that one's huge. It's That one's going to take more time. Um, okay. I have my fire burn. Um, and again, I'm not 100% sure whether I showed well, I know I've worked on this since you guys saw it last a little bit. So this is a um, ink circles that I got out of. I believe it's it's the 2012, but it could be the 2013 um, uh, just cross stitch Halloween edition magazine. Although you can get this, I know that I've seen this pattern on one two three stitch. So I'm close to I would say half done with it. And I'm just using a DMC, oh no, no, I'm sorry. Um, I'm using a Needle Necessities variegated orange floss. And um, then the green is, I think it's a Coates and Clark that I just had. Uh, one skein of a green variegated um, that I decided to use as an accent color. Oh, I'm dropping stuff. Sorry, that was a wonderful view for you. Okay, so, um, Baggy, what you doing? Okay, 
Um, I worked a little bit on um, All Hallows Eve by Glendon Place. And I don't have the picture right here. Sorry about that. Um, I worked a little bit more on the Belfry here. But this I just worked on one day. Oops. I move the needle minder so it's not what you're seeing completely. So yeah, I just did a little bit more of that roof right there. And um, this is done on a picture this plus fabric in jewel, which I just think is beautiful fabric. And I think it works really well for this piece. Um, I've heard people say picture this plus is really soft Ada and it is, it is in some ways I think harder to stitch on because it's so soft. I mean, it's not impossible or anything and I think it's beautiful, but it definitely is a different feel. Autumn Cat. This is, oops, this is by Al Forest Embroidery. This was a free pattern on their website. Sorry, it's all mushed up. Um, so the story with this one is, is that I started stitching the cat. Um, I'm kind of using my own flosses for this, my own pulls. And I started stitching the cat with a, a very highly variegated um, uh, Neil Mosesi's floss that went from like bright white to a dark gray. And I just really hated the way the cat looked. So this languished for quite a while um, because I didn't like it. I'm doing it on a 22 count heart uh, anger. So it's pretty tiny stitches and I didn't like it so I put it aside and it stayed aside for you know, six months or whatever. And then um, I saw on Bree's stitching stuff, she had done this pattern, and I think she actually started this pattern because she saw me start the pattern. Um, so it's funny that then I saw her and it inspired me to get it back out. And I, and I pulled the stitches that I didn't like, and then I'm basically using the same floss, but I'm cutting out the white bits. So it's just the variegated grays. And so now I think it looks way better. Um, I did a couple more motifs all the way down here, and then more on the cat, and moving over. Right, two more. Um, I worked on Night Walk Down by the Blue Flower. I started this in October as, not October, in August as my Black Cat Birthday Sal project. So last year, my Black Cat Birthday Sal project was the Nora Corbett Red Kitten, which is right there. Um, and I was able to finish it in the month of August. Um, this year, a, I have a lot more whips than I did last year, and B, it's a much more complicated project, uh, project so it's going to take me a while. So I am, my goal on this one is to get it finished before August next year, um, which I think I, I will. I don't think it's going to take me that long, but I worked more on the cat, and I finished this flower and did more in this, this, uh, this section started the border. I'm doing this on a uh, 18. I, I, what is? I'm doing it on a linen, uh, 32 count linen, I think. 36. I'm not sure. It's it's in the description box below. But this is a linen that uh, it's opalescent linen that I dyed myself, and. Um, it just, I wish, I know on camera here, it just doesn't, it doesn't show it to its best uh, a 
effect. The colors are super subtle. The the sparkle is subtle and it just it really evokes the whole to me the whole emotion of the night walk down thing and um, I think it's just really pretty on camera the colors in this kind of tend to blend together a little bit um and it's not like that in real life it's it's they're subtle but there's definitely you can see the difference in the colors Okay, and the last thing I worked on was sampler, my Sampler Osha, which I started for a Sampler September. Um, and I'm so happy that I started this um, because this was my first time working on 20 Count Ada, and I love it. And I, I'm using um, Sulky Thread on it, which I also am loving. And so this whole, this whole project, it's just, it's just a real joy to work on. So this is how far I got so far. And I did personalize it. Um, there's an alphabet on the pattern right there. And instead of doing the alphabet, I put Carla Loves Baggy. Baggy is my big black cat. So that section is personalized, and um, yeah. And as I said, I'm work I'm using Sulky. I've got one of the blendables, that is the majority, and then I'm doing the cats in the purple, and then just little accent things in the in the pink, like the fish in here is the pink, and the mice, and the hearts. So all the little other animals I'm gonna do in the pink. Um, I don't really like doing animals in variegated for some reason um, so yeah that's that's all my whips so that was I mean I considering how ill I was I don't know if ill is the right word because it's like it was a physical thing but I sure felt awful um, but I feel like I got a lot of stuff accomplished um, in the last two weeks okay so now we're on to the haul section, which is uh, not huge, but I actually do have some stuff this week to show you. Um, oops, in there. Okay, so the first thing I got, these are for those diamond painters out there. Um, if you watch other diamond painting people, um, Citerista, well, she's the only one that I really watch, so, but I'm sure a ton of people have been showing these pretty placers, um, wax, crayons that are all different like really yummy scents and these are from a shop on Etsy, on Etsy called Pretty Placers. Um, they sell out like immediately so you kind of have to like keep on top of it um, to, to even get one and they're about seven dollars each. Um, so I saw Stitcherista like review them and of course because she's such a huge channel that just made them like sell out even more so um, but I was intrigued. I wanted to see the whole concept is, is that you don't have to fill your pen with wax and all that kind of stuff. And you can just use their crayons, um, and you just use these. So I got two of them. I got the two scents that were available at the time that I got them, but they were ones that I was interested in anyway. This one is Lime Margarita. Smells really good. Um, and then this one is lemongrass, which also smells really good. So they're both kind of like, <coughs> excuse me, slightly citrusy. Um, I am interested in maybe getting a couple other, like I want to get the strawberry lemonade and maybe a berry flavor or something like that. But the last time I was on where I was able, I would have been able to buy some, they were all like more, I would say perfumey scents that had like perfumey names. So, you know, I have no idea what they're going to smell like, and I wasn't really interested in that. Um, but this one is the lemongrass. So, they both smell really good. Um, maybe a little bit like lemon pledge, but I like that smell. I mean, not, you know, lemon pledge has a cleaner smell, and they don't have that, I mean, cleaning smell. But they have the lemony smell of that kind of thing, if that makes any sense. 
Um, but anyway, so yeah, I decided to try them. Um, I did use them, use one of them on a little bit on the cat thing. Um, I don't think for me that they're going to be the best thing to use on square because I press too hard and just because of I use the tip of, you know, the middle tip of the pen to kind of adjust and move the drills. But I think for round diamonds that I'm not as concerned about placement. I mean, basically, if I get them in the right place, they're in the right place. They don't have to be adjusted. They're going to work great. And it is nice to not have to fill the pen and etc. So I guess I'll update that review when I finish this painting and start a round diamond one. But if you are a diamond painter and like getting diamond painting accessories, then I would check out that shop on Etsy and, you know, if there's a smell that's available that you like, you know, try one. They're not, the, I mean, they're expensive if you're buying a bunch of them. If you're buying one, it's only, it's only $7. So... Okay, what else did I get? Oh, so I had a weak moment, shall we say, and I was on eBay, and occasionally I'll go on there, and then I'll put in, like, um, County Canvas, and I'm more interested in seeing if they have kits that are, like, a really good price, because if you can get a kit with all the, the threads and everything, for a decent price then it's totally worth it so I did this one is a Nancy's needles it's autumn leaves I believe it was like $20 so that's really a good price because this included the chart which are usually like eight to ten dollars and then it also had the mono canvas and the four flosses and I know like like these are four and you know these you know so Anyway, it was like totally worth the, the price, and I think it's pretty. And as we know, I really like the counter canvas, so um, this uh, this main color, well, this main, this is the main color, and that's a, um, a Wild Colors, it's called Antique Brass, I think, yeah, Antique Brass. So that's like the main background color, but then all of the 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 autumn leaf part is done with this uh, overture uh, rainbow gallery, which I think is really pretty. So I'm excited to use that. And then it also came with the metallics, um, gold rush, and I use this. I guess the gold rush is the the type of Gloss or thread, um, and this is in the color. What is this? Sorry, copper. So this is in the color copper. I used this type of floss in one of my other projects in a silver, and it it's very nice to work with like it doesn't feel like a metallic floss at all you know and anybody's worked with metallic flosses you know they can be like a huge pain to work with this not at all this is like soft and stitches beautifully um, yeah so it came with the four the four needed flosses and the piece of mono canvas so I'm happy about this purchase eBay, gotta love it. Free shipping. It was either free shipping or it was cheaper than I'm saying, and the shipping made it 20. But I paid 20 for this. And which I totally encourage you guys to go on eBay um, if you're looking for something specific, or even if you just want to look around, but just. Be aware of the shipping because there's a lot of times where something will look like it's a wonderful deal and then the shipping is outrageous so you really need to factor that in to your I mean I understand that they you know shipping is part of of it when you're ordering online um, it's just a reality but and if you put in free shipping which you can do um, then the prices are gonna tend to be a little bit higher but you just have to really be aware of that because I've I haven't ever 
hit and actually purchase something like that but I've gotten all excited like I've seen like a lot of a lot not not a lot of but I mean a group of uh, let's say flosses like um, gentle arts you know and it'll be like an amazing price like you know um, and then you go and look at the shipping the shipping is like $15 so it's not so amazing anymore Okay, and then the last thing that I ordered over the last couple weeks, it, and I told you guys about this, is I ordered the Long Dog Sampler uh, chart called Pavane for These Times, and I just think that this is just so, I don't know, it just spoke to me. I mean, you guys know how it is. You go and you, you see a chart, and it just makes you go, oh, wow. Um, and I talked about everybody starting Pandemic, um, and I did download Pandemic. I have it. Um, when you know it was offered for free which was so great um so i so i went ahead and downloaded it this one to me is you know the whole sentiment behind stitching something to either commemorate or remember 2020 and all the, the stuff that we've had to go through this year this one speaks to me more than that than even pandemic does um and what the saying on it says is turn your face to the sun and the shadows fall behind you and I just think it's gorgeous. And after starting on Sample Rocha, I basically wanted to do a very similar thing. I wanted to use the same kind of fabric and the same silky threads, etc. Um, and I wanted to do it in very calming shape. So I got two fabrics to um, choose from. So I got a 20 count opalescent white which I'm not you guys know I don't stitch a lot on white when I do it tends to be a sparkly white um, which come on sparkles show I don't know are they showing I don't think they're showing and then I got this blue cashmere but I think I'm gonna go with the sparkly white the um, the main blendables that I chose is the, I think it's called Peacock or Peacock Plume. I'm sorry if my lighting's off today. I have the window open and it's just, the sun's being weird. I just think these blue and green colors are just going to be really calming to stitch on. Um, but I think, I think I like them better on the white with the opalescent you know I love sparkles and then um, I'm gonna pull from the the silkies that I have because I got a couple little um, containers you know the 10 packs or six packs I got a couple of those um, there's a green I think that will go with it and that's what I'm gonna stitch um, all the little all the little animals and there's little butterflies everywhere. So I think I'm, those are all gonna be green. And I think I might stitch, the border on this is kind of like a double border. It's like there's a solid line and then there's kind of a, like a ruffly line. And I think I'm gonna do the solid in the variegated and then the ruffly line on the inside in the green just to have a nice little accent um, with the green. And the words I'm not sure. Um, the other thing on this is there's initials here. It says, it says the date is up here in the chart. It says 2020. Um, I think I'll probably put the end date when I finish it. I don't know. Maybe I'll do 2020. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Um, but as far as the initials, I think instead I'm going to find some place to put my name really small, like maybe under one of the vases or something. And then instead of the initials down here, I never knew what to put when there when there's initials, honestly, because <clears throat> my last name <clears throat> is um, I use two last names um, because I never dropped my my maiden name, and then when I got divorced, I never dropped my my married name. Um, if I had my life to live over again, I wouldn't have changed my name at all. Uh, not because of the divorce, but just because it was such a pain to do it. And I do have some licenses and stuff through my work that were really a pain to 
get my name switched and because the, where it fell in renewing my license and so that's one of the reasons why I didn't switch it back because I didn't want to have to go through that again with all of my licenses. So I do use um, both names. I don't hyphen, I just use both of them. And so I never know what my last initial is or what I want to use. So, um, but anyway, that problem was solved by, um, by Long Dog Samplers because on the page where she gives the alphabet for doing those initials, she also has charted like several different squirrels and, um, squirrels and there's a rabbit, I think. There's a rabbit and like two, two or three different squirrels that would be that same size. So I can put two little animals in there instead of, um, the letters. So that's, I think, what I'm going to do. So I don't know. I kind of want to start this like now. Um, but I'm still in that dilemma of like, well, I want to get stuff done and not have, you know, more whips, but I don't know. I might start that this week or maybe I will save it and start it as a special start or something. I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent sure yet what I'm going to do with this. Um, I have so many charts actually that I've gotten over the last, let's say six months that I want to start and you know, but again, I want to work the lips down. So yeah, I have to, I have to make decisions on that. Um, I think it's kind of funny. I've been watching a lot of people who have decided that they're going to do this, like no new starts 2021 kind of thing. But most of the people that I've watched that are doing that have also at the same time decided that they're going to start a bunch of stuff right now so that they can do no new starts, which I don't a hundred percent understand that because if I were going to do no new starts 2021, I guess the idea would be to get the whips that I have down from 30 to whatever. Um, but other people are like doing a no new start. So they're adding 20 whips before the year ends. So I don't totally get that, but you know what, whatever makes you happy and makes you enjoy your stitching more, more power to you. So I'm not going to put restrictions on myself. No new starts in 2021. Um, but I'm also going to try really hard to get stuff down before doing a bunch of new starts. Does that make sense? Hope so. Okay, so I think, let's see, plans coming up again, just to work on what I've been working on. Um, I might go through my whips and see, like, what do I have that is really kind of close to a finish and get, you know, put those to, like, the front of the pile to try and get them done. I know I have um, the project that I'm doing for my stepdaughter. I just need to do all of the backstitching on those words, and that one will be done. So I really need to put a good focus on that. In fact, sh I may be seeing her next weekend, so I really should um, push that this week to try and get that finished and framed and so I can give it to her. Um, but yeah, so I need to go through my whips and see what do I have that can I can bump to the front of the line to get them done. And, um, and then need to maybe make decisions on things that I really want to start sooner rather than later. I have so many good things, you guys, and I just, <laughs> why can't I just stitch? Not have to go to work, clean my apartment. My apartment is like such a pigsty from when I was not feeling well because I was just, you know, <laughs> I had a, I had a, a garbage bag by me because I couldn't get to anywhere, but you know, um, and then I've been taking it easy the last week. So, I mean, I have a sink full of dishes right now that have to get done today. And my poor cat needs his boxes cleaned. And, um, yeah, I have a few other straightening things that I think I need to get done, try and get done today. Although I'm going to be tired today. And so I need to take it easy at the same time. So I'm going to probably do the bare minimum, but yeah, that bare minimum does need to be done. But anyway, so my plans this week are just to continue stitching what makes me feel happy. And um, I don't think I'm going to be doing much at my, my table. So like the big projects like Ella and and the, the beading projects and stuff like that, I can't do, you know, in my regular stitchy place. I have to sit at my, my craft table to do it. So those may not get worked on for, for a couple weeks just because I'm still resting my body. Um, but I have plenty of other things to work on. So... 
I will see you guys uh, next week. Have a great week this week. Um, I'm hoping the weather here cools off a little bit. I mean, we're in the middle of October. You know, it's not supposed to be 90 something degrees every day, but I'm hoping it's gonna, I think it's supposed to cool off to be in the 80s. I hope, knock wood. Um, and then in two weeks, Halloween, and I will be seeing my nieces and nephews again for a little Halloween uh, get together. And um, I'm excited for that because they are very excited, especially Hudson, the six year old. He's just over the moon excited about Halloween. And um, yeah, so that's what the plans are going forward. And um, as I said earlier, look out for an extra video for me um, later today or early next week because um, I'm going to be reviewing my second Universal bo uh, Yums box and it's Russia. So they posted stuff. I thought it was all a big surprise, but apparently they tell you ahead of time. So it's Russia. So I'm excited to try out that stuff. So until I see you next week, you guys, please remember to be content. Be kind and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.